Okay, so this right here is my macerated apple and rhubarb sorbet, and it is awesome. It's silky smooth, it's just incredible. It has to be tasted to be, to be believed. The flavour is intense, it tastes like apple rhubarb, and you just really gotta try it. So, if you wanna learn how to make it, keep watching. So, the first time I made this, it was incredible. It was just awesome. And the second time I made it, I tried to cheat a little bit so, and it didn't come out as good. So, this time I'm going to go back to the basics and it is fantastic. Yeah. You don't want the leaves because the leaves of the rhubarb are quite poisonous. So we'll take them off. And then just chop it up into nicely, nice small little pieces. Now the good thing about macerating anything is that it brings out all the flavours inside of it. It brings out without cooking it. So compare it to something like freshly squeezed orange juice to orange juice that's been pasteurised. That's the difference of cooking it makes. And it's what we want to try and avoid in this. So it's going to bring it out all the lovely flavour inside of that and just bring a very, very nice mixture. So I'll chop the rest of these off. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a pretty chop out at all. It can be quite rough. Okay, so roughly chopped apples, all straight in there with the rhubarb. And in there, I now have the apple and the rhubarb. And there's one extra thing that I'm gonna to add to it. But I'm not 100% sure how necessary it is. I recently bought myself some new vanilla beans, and these are my old ones. They're quite dried, and they're quite brittle, and they'll snap like that. So, I'm going to chuckle them in there as well. And then, is the part of the mixture that's going to make it really shine. It's the sugar. So, I have about a kilo and a bit of sugar, and that all is going to go straight on top of that mixture. See there, and then I'm just going to whip it all around so it's all very covered in sugar. And now comes a bit that I'm not great at. Have to be patient. So this is going to get wrapped up very tightly and put in the fridge, and it's going to get there for 15 days. And it does need this time. During that time, the sugar is going to eat through all the little pieces of rhubarb that I got here all the little bits of apple and they're going to drop all the sugar and drop all of the moisture out of it and it's going to congeal it in the bottom which is what we want so from there that mixture is going to taste incredible it wouldn't be the same taste you'd get out if you just put it straight on the stove and boiled it but trust me it is worth it it is way better than anything you'll get if you're not patient so put it in the fridge put a timer set an, set an alarm on your phone and then come back to it and trust me it will be incredible and it's just what you want to add in the mixture. Okay, so that has been about two weeks that this has been sitting in there. Now, if you saw how it went in there, right now, if you can see that, it is now all a liquid. There is liquid galore in there and it tastes awesome. It tastes a lot different than you get if you just boiled it straight up and I am very excited about this one. So, I am going to strain out all of the liquid Now 
Okay, so this is my liquid that I get out of it once it's actually all marin uh, macerated down. And then I'm left with a whole big pile of fruit. After being strained out, this is a liquid that's left inside of the pot. After about two weeks worth of, worth of macerating inside of the fridge, this is liquid that comes out of it. So I've added no sugar to I've added no water to this, it's just the sugars and the juice is dropped directly from the rhubarb and the apples. And I had to figure out how much water there was, how much sugar there was inside of this mixture, because quite honestly, I couldn't tell. So to do that, I have a tricky little thing here. So this little guy here is a Briggs refractometer. And basically it detects how much sugar there is in something. So you squeeze a little bit onto there and it goes down and then you look through it and it tells you how much sugar there is in whatever you're looking at. And this one came to about, I think it was about 60, 70% sugar inside of this mixture here. If I tried to turn that into a gelati by itself, it would get into a very, very thin gelati and it would not be very, very nice. You wouldn't be able to scoop it, you wouldn't be able to do much of it. So I needed to thin it down a little bit so that it would be about 30, 35, 30 to 35% sugar, somewhere within that range. So I added about another 800 mils to a pot and that's behind me and then all the solids left over after the macerating process, I put that inside of the pot so that will boil down and just pull out any last bit of flavor inside of the mixture. So as that boils, once that boils, I will strain all of it out and I'll take all the last bits of juice out of it and then I'm going to thicken that mixture up slightly with another tricky little thing. So this is my apple and rhubarb little mixture that I'm boiling down. So as you can see, when the rhubarb cooks, it's all going to fall apart and any last bit of juices, flavors, bits from the vanilla are just going to go into the last of this water, which is what I want. I'm going to strain it out and get the maximum amount of juices and flavor and everything from this mixture that I possibly can. So it should be intense, it should be awesome, and yeah, so I'll let it boil down a little bit longer until I can get the most out of it, and then I will do something else. Okay, so I think this is boiled down enough to the point that it's getting every last bit of the flavor. The rhubarb's broken down and it's about how I want it. So I will strain it out and move on. Okay, so now I want to try and get as many solids as I can out of this mixture. So I put my trusty little strainer. So while this mixture is still quite hot, there's something else that I'm going to add to it. This is xanthan gum. It's basically the equivalent of corn flour that you would add to a sorbet. So if you get a sorbet and sometimes it sits in the freezer for a week or so, and then after that it starts getting very crystally. When you've got this stuff inside of it, it won't do that. So you don't need very much of it at all. I'm probably gonna add about five grams of this mixture. Yeah, probably about five grams for all of this mixture. So you don't need very much at all. And it works quite well just to bind all the sugar together and to make it slight, a slightly better mouthfeel after it goes. So, very carefully add five grams, and that's it. So I'll stir this through. It needs to be about 60 degrees for it to melt through the mixture and to thicken it all up nicely, but this is. Okay, so the xanthan gum is pretty much all broken down inside of it, which is what I want. And now I'm going to cool down this mixture, because it defeats the purpose of macerating this if I put it inside another hot liquid and it will just lose some of the flavour. So I want to get the best of both worlds with these two. So I'm going to cool this down inside of a sink of some cold water and then add these two together. So this has had about 10 minutes to cool down and it's about at room temperature now. And now I have my macerated liquid. So Combine the two of them together. Okay, so I have my mixture and it is going to go straight into the machine.
Okay, so have a look at that. That is done and that looks incredible. And it tastes absolutely awesome. And I've turned you off. And yes, it looks awesome. So I'll take that out, whack it into its little containers and then show you what it looks like. And have a good taste of it. Okay guys, thanks for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're gonna try it yourself. I like to put out videos semi-regularly and I try to make sure they're always something awesome. So I've got links there, there, and I'll try and keep on getting them coming. So if you want to see the new videos that come out, make sure that you subscribe down the bottom or a little link that's around there somewhere. And yeah, so thanks for watching and keep tuned for the next one. Because I'm just taking all the juice out of it after it's finished. Kitty, you are not hygienic. Who are they going to work with? You don't eat apple, you don't eat rhubarb. Off the bench. He has no respect for me at all. And now he's licking the finger that I'm pointing with. Get off. You're running my shot, man.